Good morning, Mutinistas. It has been about three weeks since I brought you a football video. My last football video was actually City playing the World Club Championship final in Saudi Arabia. Back to league matters today, and what would be normally a tough assignment, and may well prove to be the case today, away at Newcastle, has suddenly become a little easier because they are struggling like mad with injuries. They're also on a bad run of form. Let's hope they don't turn it around and City get all three points today. Well, Matanisas, I'm actually feeling a little delicate today. I vlogged a day trip to Cork, a mad Guinness and Beamish and Murphy's fueled video. And of course, this morning, I'm living with the consequences of that. Anyway, Newcastle is one of my favorite away trips, but I've had to get a later train than I wanted. So my food and drink time before the game will be limited. But don't worry, Matanistas, you'll still get some food and you'll still get some drink. And of course, as usual, I'm running tight for the train, so we'd better get on with it and I'll see you on board. Okay, Mutinistas, safely on the train, as usual with British Railways and particularly the Trans Pennine Line. I was on a train that was cancelled, a direct train, so I'm having to change at York now. Train's getting more and more ramps, so I may as well start giving my pre-match spiel now. Anyway, if you remember last time I did a vlog from Newcastle for the Carabao Cup, I was awarded a copyright strike. Thankfully, the case was awarded in my favour, so there was no problem. Don't see any such problem today, but it's a nasty thing. And the same company that struck me has struck a fellow vlogger who isn't even monetized. So hopefully YouTube will eventually clock that this company is just churning out spurious copyright strikes and do something about it. I'm quite optimistic for a City result today. Newcastle has such a raft of injuries. Joe Linton has now been added to that. OK, we have some of our own. Erling Haaland, don't know when he's coming back. And mysteriously, Jack Grealish isn't available for this one. It doesn't seem clear as to why he isn't, but I'm sure some people will know. OK, Matanista, sorry if the camera's shaking a bit. This line, I think they need to do something to the tracks because we're bumping around all over the place. Anyway, the Trans Pennine service was late arriving at York, Kel surprise, and I didn't have time to do anything. No way I could have got a pipe. But as luck has it, I've managed to secure a cheap upgrade. And given it's a London route, and yes, we look after the long distance routes from London in Britain and leave the rest of them to fester, my upgrade got me some beer, some crisps, and a reasonable looking sandwich. Pity I couldn't grab something because the bars at and just outside York Station are actually pretty good. And eagle-eyed viewers will remember that coming back from Newcastle earlier this season in the Carabao Cup, I did go to a bar, but that was a couple of blocks behind the station because the only way back to Manchester sometimes, actually coming from the south as well, if you remember the Peterborough FA Cup game a season or two ago, is to take the late Trans Pennine Airport train to Manchester Airport. And one day I'll do York Station a bit more justice, although it's likely again to be for a change of trains rather than a direct service to York because York City are 
well, not sure where they are at the moment. Anyway, the ale, the golden ale served on board, hop on board, is brewed in York. Yeah, that's quite nice. It's refreshing, hoppy, light. Not too far off what you get from a decent quality keg pale ale, in fact. Anyway, I will sit back, relax, glide into Newcastle. I mean, after this, I might not be too hungry for a food sketch, so it'll have to be something pretty swift and light. Come on, city. Okay, Matanistas, I've arrived in the tomb. It's actually four o'clock, gonna get dark soon. An hour and a half before kickoff, so not that much time to go and explore eateries. However, I do know somewhere that is tried, trusted, and I like a little Mexican place serving some tasty tacos. But before that, I'm gonna have a swift one at the Victoria Comet and Nicholson's pub. Obviously a tied house from a big brewery. And I remember for the Carabao Cup game, which we of course lost 1-0 without Rodri, the pub was absolutely round with City fans singing indoors and outdoors. Of course, it's a bit colder today, but the allocation more there. So we'll pop in and see if there's any atmosphere in there. Of course, in my experience, the pubs that away fans, particularly City fans meet up in, it seems to vary and change quite a lot. Right, Metanistas, the atmosphere is completely different here. Having said that, I know Newcastle is a very hospitable city, but wow, having one of my favourites, Northern Monk Eternal IPA here, that's something to treasure. A gorgeous pint as always, and at this Victoria Comet pub, in my experience, they look after their ales pretty well. If you remember last time, I got into a bar in City Colours called Rosie's, not far from the ground. There's one even closer called the Strawberry. I'm not in colours this time, but I'm going to see if I can get in there. If not, I'll try Rosie's again. But Newcastle supporters do tell me that there's no such thing as a home pub here, so I'm going to test that out a bit later. Anyway, I'll finish this pint, go for some tacos, at which time the team news have come out, and then try and get in that pub for a swift one before kickoff. Okay, Matanistas, I'm taking my time in the pub so much so that the team news has just come out. City very much as expected. We have Ake, we have Radiol, we have Diaz and we have Walker. Rodri and Kovacic in the middle. And don't forget, we virtually never lose when Rodri plays. And our front four today, Jeremy Doku, good to see him back starting again. Bernardo, Phil Foden and leading the line Julian Alvarez because Erling Haaland is still out injured. In fact, our only notable absentees are Johnny Stones and Irving Haaland. Yes, Akenji's out, but we have people who can adequately replace him. I think that's going to be too strong for Newcastle. As I said, they're 1-11, to 11, entirely predictable. They basically put everything out there that they can with a very, very weak bench. I think those players are going to look tired just as they did at Liverpool, and I think I'm going to stick with my prediction of 3-1 to City. Anyway, I'm match fit. Come on, you Blues. Right, I've gone for something very fast here. Three tacos, all with beef, two with cheese, one with sour cream, with some chilies, some onions, and some spicy beans. The pork looked a bit more moist than the beef, which looked a bit dry. It might be okay, but you know how it is with these places. They do a lot of stuff on mass, and then they serve it out canteen style. However, it doesn't mean the taste is gonna be bad. Well, what to make of that, Matanistas? I don't know. I remember coming here quite a few years ago to the Zapatista Tacos Bar and having a wonderful experience. This wasn't quite as good. 
I'd say the tortillas, the vegetables, the sour cream, the cheese, the sauce, all fine. The meat was dry, as dry as cardboard. And I suspect my going earlier in the day on the previous occasion might have had something to do with it. It wasn't exactly where I'd intended to go, but it was fast, cheap, convenient, so it ticked a lot of boxes. But if you're from Newcastle and you visit that establishment, please let me know in the comments what you think about it. Has it gone downhill? Was I unlucky? Or was I unlucky the first time? Anyway, luckily, Newcastle United has one of the most convenient stadiums for pedestrianised traffic. Really not very far in the city centre, but time to go to the stadium now. I'll see if I can slip in that cheeky half at the strawberry. It might not be possible, they might not let me in, but we'll wait and see until we get closer to the stadium. OK, I'm at the famous strawberry. Not much time, so I'm going to have to order a very swift half if they'll let me in and really neck it and move on to my seat. OK, I got in, no questions asked. Maybe a respectable middle-aged man they're not bothered about. Had I come in here in colours, maybe a different story. But they had something called W-O-R-B. I think it's the Geordie version of our. It's a pale ale, my sort of thing. Not a bad hoppy little number, but I'm going to have to neck this and rush out to my seat. Because, as you remember, we're on the seventh floor of the Leeser stand. And it was great to see a couple of Newcastle fans in that bar welcoming me in and telling me how much they like my vlogs. As I said, friendly city this is. And as always, the away fans are housed on the seventh tier of the Leeser stand. I'm taking the lift, I'm not climbing all those stairs. So there were so many people using that lift that I was a few minutes late and sadly Edison has had to come off engine. But there's not much to worry about because Stefan Ortega is a more than able deputy. Twenty in and the city have started quite brightly. A lot of last-ditch challenges from the Newcastle defenders, or we'd have been in by now and in front. As for Newcastle, they are concentrating very much on our left and their right, where Aki plays as opposed to where Walker plays. Nothing there new this season. Superbly from left to right, Kyle Walker making a deep run into the opposition wings, fed it over to Bernardo, 1-0 City. Well, everything had been going well, but some sloppy retention of possession and passings. Come on City, cut it out. I did warn about that sloppily giving possession away, being caught on the counter, and I'm not sure who the defender was, but allowing Isaac to shoot on the right was criminal. Should have covered that side and forced him to turn inside. Well taken goal though, nonetheless. Same again, almost a carbon copy. 
down our right or our left this time, Gordon, and I'm not sure again who the defender is, okay, I'm not a professional defender, but should you really be allowing them to take those shots and curl it round the defender? Can't you show him inside? And I'd say, again, another well-taken goal, a great shot, and it doesn't have to be that those two chances lead to two goals, because they're about the only ones Newcastle have had, other than the one where they dispossessed us when we were being terribly sloppy. And as I speak, we've just given the ball away again. Well, what about that? What has happened there? I thought City looked in control of the game, having a good first half. Could and should have been more than one up, but we've been caught in possession. We've dilly-dallied the Newcastle players as they did in that 1-0 Carabao Cup game in the second half. Harassed us, so it's not something we shouldn't have been expecting. We've given away possession, been done down the wings for pace, and I have to say, two very well-taken goals. But people who know about professional defending more than me can tell me whether Isaac and Gordon should have been allowed to turn and get those shots away. Newcastle is always very physical, putting in some meaty challenges, which I think they were getting away with, but no excuse for Rodri to retaliate and get himself a silly booking. We do have some ammunition on the bench, particularly in the form of Kevin De Bruyne. I think we're going to need it in the second half. This game's far from over because the way Newcastle are playing, although how might change that, they were fairly easy to play through if you could break that press of theirs. Who knows what's going to happen in the second half. Maybe it'll be another 3-3 humdinger. But at the moment, I'm afraid I am very worried about City being caught at the back again. Alvarez is dangerous from here. Oh! Go on. Oh. Go on. Oh! Another dangerous free kick position. Referee failing to produce a card again. I have to say, we've been getting into some great positions, but some awful final balls. And too many touches being taken, particularly by Jeremy Doku. And every time he takes a second or third touch, there are three defenders on him. But let's hope something comes of this free kick. Twenty minutes left, Kevin De Bruyne are on, he can supply the ammunition, but we've got to start taking some of these chances.
Foster Bar gets the win out for City. A delicious ball from Kevin De Bruyne. It probably would have been a penalty, but he stood up on his feet, knocked it in. There are only three added limits. So surely, surely, surely we completed an incredible comeback and got all three points. Just a couple of minutes left to play. Well, what a game. I'm looking forward to the post-match pint and editing this video. What a belter it's going to be. Four of us. We're not getting on you. Well, what a game that was, Matinistas, I confess. All the drinking and eating at the start caused me to miss the first few minutes and I arrived as Edison had got injured and apparently a goal was disallowed just prior to that. Anyway, we started off well, we really did. So many good positions, we got into so many chances and our finishing was as bad as Nunes, Cole and Werner all put together. Anyway, I'm back at the Victoria Comet on a Northern Monk Eternal IPA, always a great brewery to pick a beverage from. And after that, we went ahead, we actually managed to stick one away and I thought we were looking good to win that game. Usually against Newcastle, first goal with Eddie Howe's rather steady tactics, you usually win against them. Not always, of course. And wow, did they turn it on its head. We got caught twice. From the ball being given away or an attack breaking down in their half. And did they skin us on the wings? And a couple of long balls then caught us out. I'm not sure Kyle Walker should have been turned for the first goal. He kind of allowed Isaac to go on his favourite foot. The second goal was a carbon copy. I mean, they were marvellous finishes, don't get me wrong. But I think the defending could have been improved upon a bit now. Second half, we came out, all guns blazing. We got into some more great positions, but too many touches, especially from Jeremy Doku. Suddenly three Newcastle defenders on him at once. And again, we penned Newcastle back into their own half. We kept getting into great positions, but again, more bad decisions in the final third and too many touches. All that changed, of course, when Kevin De Bruyne came on. What a guy, what a player. It took him very little time to get involved. A decent free kick. And then, when all the forwards were misfiring, he just did it himself. He took the ball on and almost side-footed it into the net. And from then on, Newcastle were basically trying to hang on for a 2-2 draw. But at the end of the match, we finally managed to batter the door down after 
15 minutes of relentless pressure. De Bruyne again at the heart of it with another delicious ball and what a composed finish from Oscar Bob. A Newcastle player kind of almost brought him down and it would have been a penalty, but he stood on his feet and coolly slotted it past the Newcastle keeper. Quick scare of a goal mouth scramble after that, but the winning goal was in the 91st minute, so we didn't have to wait that long for the final whistle amid scenes of unbridled joy in the away end. Newcastle not having their best season and I mean it's very hard to be critical of them when they've got an injury list bigger than most people's squads. I keep saying that this is one of my favourite away trips, it most definitely is. I didn't really do the city justice this time so I apologise to the folk of Newcastle and Newcastle supporters. I know some of you follow me and watch my vlogs. I was in a bit of a rush after my mad day trip to court yesterday, so it had to be quickly in and out today. I still had a great time anyway, and some Newcastle supporters recognised me in the strawberry. Quick slurp of this delicious ale. And I'm going to have to wrap things up here, folks. The next football vlog will be from the FA Cup away to Tottenham and then we've got a home match against Burnley in the league a few days later. Until then, keep liking, keep subscribing, keep sharing, please tell all your friends about me. But most of all, don't forget, you can't beat a bit of mutton.